All right. After this nice little break, let's uh, let's back let's back the team. Um, hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'm Marco, and during the during the day, I'm an Android developer, and during the night, I like to explore other platforms. And uh, specifically, on the past uh, half, a year and a half, I've been working on uh, an open source pet, uh, pet project that is an RSS reader uh, that is uh, be, that is available on Android, uh, iOS, and macOS. And specifically, I'm doing it with the Kotlin multi-platform, Compose multi-platform for the and Android and uh, desktop part, and um, with ZwiftUI for the iOS part. And today, I want to tell you the journey that took me to actually deploy and release this uh, pet project, so to uh, put it out from the unreleased uh, drawer of pet projects. And uh, I will tell you all the stuff that I had to do in order to actually uh, release it. So if you're going to... Um, maybe you're going to be motivated to, uh, or inspired to do the same, or if you're going to have the same, uh, if you're going to end up in the same process, you, you already know what to, what to do. Okay, uh, so of course, uh, since I'm an Android developer, I started from the easy path, so I started to do the things on Android first. And yeah, since I'm doing this every day, it's, it was easy for me. Uh, but just to recap, uh, all the stuff that you have to do is signing the app, because yes, you don't want to put uh, um, unsigned up uh, outside in the in the world, and uh, after signing it, you just have to upload it to the Play Store, and then of course go through the um, review process and release process. But yeah, let's uh, let's pretend that it doesn't exist for now for the, for the talk, and but yeah, that's all the stuff that you have to do in order to release uh, an Android application. Um, for the iOS part, uh, it's kind of pretty similar. Uh, it's um, uh, of course, it gets more complicated because, yeah, it's another platform, but it's still manageable. Um, so, again, you still have to sign the app for the same security reason uh, like on Android. Uh, there's a, uh, one more thing uh, to do, which, ha uh, which is having provisioning profiles, uh, because basically um, it's, it's a thing that is required on the iOS world in order to verify that uh, you actually sign the app with a correct certificate and with a legitimate certificate that is coming from, um, from your uh, developer account that is enrolled to the, to the developer account. So it's a mandatory step that you need to in order to have a, a deployed application. And after that, you can just upload the thing to the, to the store using uh, text flights. And uh, everything is uh, managed by can be managed by I Xcode because uh, you can use the uh, release wizard that uh, goes through the release process by you, and of course can be a good and a bad thing depend of your feeling with Xcode, but that's another topic. Uh, or of course you can go manually with the CI if you're, if you're using the CI. And yeah, and that's for for iOS. So um, uh, something different, but pretty much similar thing. And now let's go to the roller coaster and exciting part, which is macOS. And um, before diving into it, a little uh, little point. So in this case, I'm uh, really I'm developing and I'm, I'm releasing a JVM desktop application. So I'm not doing anything uh, platform specific on um, with the Apple tooling. So uh, uh, we're not using Apple tooling for publishing, but uh, rather JVM tooling. So that's a, that's a, um, a thing to take in mind. Um, so for actually releasing on macOS, we can, well, uh, a way could be just releasing a jar, but yeah, it's not the most user-friendly thing to do. Uh, you need the consumer to have the JDK installed, and yeah, it's, it's a weird user experience uh, for non-techy uh, people, for example. Um, uh, then another way to do stuff is to manually distribute in the, uh, your app, and by manual, I mean outside the app store. So for example, with another mean of uh, distribution, like for example, your website or uh, stuff like that. Um, and of course, uh, you can do it through, through the App Store, like for uh, an iOS application. And for all this step, you don't, uh, you don't need Xcode at all because it's only JVM tooling, which again, it's, uh, can be a good or a bad thing depending on your, uh, your feeling. For me, it was good, but yeah. Okay, um, so back at, the, back at the how to actually distribute the thing. So for manually distributing uh, an app outside the App Store, uh, you can guess what the first step is, which is, again, signing the application. You have to sign everything before releasing. And um, an additional thing to do is notarization. Um, and it's a mandatory step to, to, um, in order to distribute outside the App Store. If you don't do that, then um, 
gatekeeper, that is the macOS thing that you may have heard of, that uh, does the sound of checks, this type of checks will uh, shout a complaint because it can recognize uh, it, uh, it can recognize your application. And um, basically, the notarization step uh, is uh, in the notarization step, uh, Apple is uh, looking at your binary to search if there's some if you sneak in some malware or some malicious code, and it it will be aware of your uh, binary. So in this case, when you're gonna install the thing on your on your on another machine, uh, Gatekeeper will know. Yeah, I know this binary; it's all safe. And uh, you can do it with a uh, with a Gradle task, so you don't have to deal with the Xcode CLI. And uh, you have to wait a couple of minutes uh, because this process takes a couple of minutes. And after that, you can just distribute your app to your specific mean of distribution, which could be, uh, for example, GitHub releases. Uh, you can just upload your, uh, your binary into GitHub releases and then uh, make uh, the user uh, download it. OK, uh, for the App Store, uh, again, uh, you may now guess again what's the, step for the, what's the first step, which is app signing again. And like on iOS, uh, we need to provide provisioning for profiles for the same reasons. But in this case, we also need to provide a provisioning profile for the JVM. Because um, in the binary, there will be a um, small JVM runtime embedded into it. So we need to provide an additional provisioning profile. And after that, we can finally upload the thing to, to test flight. And since we are not using Xcode, uh, we can use a Transporter. Which is, a, uh, which is a, an app from, um, from Apple uh, to, that lets you upload stuff to, to, the, to, the, um, to the App Store uh, and to TechFlight. So in this case, you can, just, uh, you can just sign in with your account and just upload your binary. Or, of course, you can do it with the, C, with the, with the CI and with uh, manual stuff. And, of course, I, I arrive at this step. I try to upload it. And uh, of course, I didn't expect to make it work at the first round because, yeah, it's it's impossible. And in fact, I got an error. Uh, and the first error was this error was uh, telling me that I um, that I need also to provide uh, an Intel version of the of the app, which is something I didn't want to do it because, yeah, or uh, now Apple Silicon is very uh, distributed, and I'm I'm doing this in my free time, so Apple Silicon is enough. Um, but I couldn't do it because I need to, in order to do that, you need to target macOS 12. And apparently, uh, the um, Compose Multiplatform uh, Gradle plugin was only targeting, was hard coding the version 10 or something. So I, um, I, make, um, I make a change uh, and with Compose 1.6.10, which got released yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, um, you can now customize your version, uh, the minimum version that you want. So you can put 12 in this case. And so I, could, I was able to just upload an Apple Silicon only version and, uh, and, uh, and just have it on the store. OK, so at this point, I just had a successful upload. And then I was um, ready to, to try to run the app. I wasn't expected to be run and to be run successfully on the first uh, on the first time, and of course there was another error, and uh, this error is uh, was a more cryptic uh, because it was saying that some native library from SQLite was not uh, couldn't couldn't be open because Apple thinks it's a, it's a malware, so it was yeah it was a bit strange. So after some digging, I discovered that. Uh, all the macOS app um, that are deployed on the App Store run in a sandbox, which is basically a, a security feature from, from Apple that uh, um, doesn't allow you to access to all the user, uh, user data and also to all the system resources. So basically, uh, for example, you, you can't uh, load just some random native library because yeah, it could be uh, everything could be a malware or something. And um, what the JVM is doing, uh, and in this case, uh, what the app is doing, is trying to load my database. And to load the database is using a native library to access the uh, JDBC connection. And basically, it's, uh, by default, the JVM uh, unpack the native library from the, the, from the jar of the dependency. And it's uh, placing it to a temporary folder just to, to be able to, to load it. And this temporary folder is inside the sandbox. And uh, of course, uh, one on the point of a sandbox is just not uh, to not load uh, random code, uh, and especially unsigned code. So uh, that was that was because it was failing. So in order to fix that, uh, you have to locate your uh, native library that you're using. Uh, so in this case, for uh, I'm using SQL Delight. SQL Delight is using the 
this uh, SQLite JDBC con connector. So you can grab the, the, the native library of the architecture that you need to target, and you can place it into the resources of, uh, of your desktop app. Um, Compose gave a possibility to, to have the uh, architecture and target specific assets. So in this case, I can put macOS uh, ARM64. And then I can load, the, um, I can load uh, my library manually. Uh, and not um, and not uh, by default by the JVM. So in this way, I can say, please pick the uh, if my app is running in a sandbox, please keep the native library from the path that I that I uh, that I told you. And with that, finally, I was able to run uh, to run and, and publish the, my my app in the in all the play, uh, in all the, the the stores. So it was happy. But of course, uh, after. This the, the journey doesn't end here because after deploying something, you need to to check if things are working properly. So for crash reporting and logging, uh, I'm for the mobile part. I'm using uh, Crashalytics, Firebase Crashalytics, uh, in combination with uh, Crash KIOS from TouchLab, which is a library that allows you to have a proper uh, stack trace from Kotlin uh, when it's run it inside iOS, so not just a random memory address, but, but a, proper, um, a proper stack trace. And for macOS, I had no idea what to use. And after some digging, I discovered that there's uh, the Sentry Java SDK that can be used in every, in, in every JVM language. So I just uh, picked it up, and it's working pretty nice. And for logging, instead, I'm using another, touch lab, another library from TouchLab, which is Kermit. And besides the, the, um, the simple logging stuff, so the usual level of uh, info, the bug, uh, whatsoever, you can also redirect the logs to a specific uh, platform in the internet, for example, for the release version. So for the mobile side, I'm redirecting my logs to Crashalytics. And instead, for the macOS uh, app, I'm redirecting the thing to Sentry. And uh, the Crashalytic log writer comes uh, out of the box with Kermit. Um, instead, for Sentry, I had to write it my own. But yeah, it's pretty simple. It's well documented how to do it. So uh, that's, that's very nice. I, and I can have some logs in my, uh, in my crash reporting tool. OK, uh, I'm running out of time. So uh, uh, a quick words about internationalization. Um, so for uh, internationalization, I'm using Lyricist, which uh, it's a very nice library. I really enjoy it um, because I can, for example, specify all the uh, in a map all the strings that I'm supporting, uh, and then on uh, on Compose, I can access with the composition local. I can access the current um, the current locale that uh, that the device has. And then on SwiftUI, I can just uh, get the, the string that I want uh, by directly accessing the, the current uh, language code. Uh, I'm not using yet uh, Compose Multiplatform resources because uh, it requires uh, uh, to access to the resource to the resource to the string outside Compose. You need a suspending function, and I don't want to use a suspending function in SwiftUI just to get uh, a translation. So for the time being, uh, I'm happy with that. Let's see if it changes in the future. OK, uh, so I, I could talk for hours about this stuff because there's a lot to cover. But uh, yeah, time is a bit, uh, it's, it's not the best. Uh, so I've, uh, if you want to explore more, more stuff, I wrote a bunch of, uh, a bunch of posts in my, in, my, in my blog about uh, deploying on GitHub Action that covers a lot of, stuff, of the stuff that I mentioned uh, today. And uh, if you have uh, any additional question, I'm happy to, to answer. You can stop me around and um, be more than happy to, to chat about it. So yeah, and don't forget to vote. And yeah, thank you very much.